Okay, so hopefully after yesterday, you're able to kind of complete the front side of that worksheet. Agreed? Those are what we call nice behaving polynomials. Nice behaving polynomials. What if you get something that's not as nice behaving? In these situations right here, uh, this was pretty good, this was pretty good. In fact, ahead of time, you may have a general idea of what those shapes looked like. Everybody agree? You kind of kind of know what those look like a little bit, right? You see fourth degree, third degree? Um, not so much, right? What does it look like? That's tough. So let's go about our business and be able to find this, uh, some interesting characteristics about this. Increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. And then we're going to say local max, local min, and inflection. This is our goal at this time. In order to determine these things, I need first derivatives, second derivatives. I would first like you to tell me something about the original polynomial. Is there any spot where the denominator could be equal to zero? Why? Good. X squared plus one, everybody agree that it's not going to be zero? If it was X squared minus one, then we'd be having a different conversation. Agreed? So that means that the domain is all real numbers. So there's no crazy like asymptote or something that's going on with the graph. All right, if I want to find the first derivative, what rule do I need to use? What's that? Yep, nice and loud, thank you, I appreciate that. We got quotient rule going on here, so let's do it. Derivative of the top, times the bottom, minus 2x times 9x, all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. We good? Let's distribute the 9. 9x nine squared plus 9 minus 18x squared. All over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So what do I get in the top? All right, is 9 minus 9x squared over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Beautiful. Is the denominator ever equal to 0? So I don't care about the denominator. It's always positive. Agreed? So let's just focus on the numerator. Does the numerator factor? I could factor out a 9, and then we would also have the difference of squares, wouldn't we? So the top factors to 9 times 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yes, you could, you don't have to. What shape does the top make? Parabola. So although this shape as a whole doesn't make a parabola, the fact is that I can use a parabola in order to, deter in order to determine where it's positive and negative. Agreed? So everybody understand why I'm, why I'm ignoring the denominator? The denominator is always positive. I don't have to worry about it. So... Uh, I'm just going to focus on the numerator right now. And I know it crosses through positive 1 and negative 1. Is it right side up or upside down? Why is it upside down? Because it's a negative 9x squared. Good. So where am I increasing? Negative 1 to 1. Why negative 1 to 1? That's where it's above the x-axis. Where is it decreasing?
Do I have a local max? Why? Because it changes from positive to negative. Very good. Local max happens at 1. Could you plug it in in order to get a y value? Do we plug it into the derivative or do we plug it into the original? And I get 9 over 2. So 4.5. The local min, negative 1, negative 4.5. We're all okay there? All right. Done with the work for my first derivative. I apologize, I don't have a lot of space there for you. Some of you guys will have room, some of you guys will have to turn to somewhere else or add some extra work somewhere, but uh, this uh, next derivative will take a little bit of space. We have 9 minus 9x squared over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. All right, what rule do I use to find this derivative? Quotient rule again. Derivative of the top. Negative 18x times x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Minus the derivative of the bottom. How would I find the derivative of the bottom? The chain rule. Actually, if you just want to float right into problem D, we're just going to eliminate problem D. So I get 2u and I get 2x. If I multiply those together, I get 4x times x squared plus 1. Now i got to multiply that by nine minus 9x nine squared all over x squared plus 1 to the fourth. All right, good job. You did the hard part. The rest is easy. True or false? I have a common factor in the top and a common factor in the bottom. What is the common factor? Everybody agree I can remove an x squared plus 1 from the top and from the bottom? So therefore, if I remove it from the top and the bottom, okay, so I take 1 out of each term, so that will be gone. This will reduce to 1, and this will reduce to 3. Oh boy. Is there a question there? I saw the eyes of confusion. No? Thank you. So I'll 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 write this out. Okay. Ready? I'm gonna take that red away and you'll see this piece. If I were to factor out an x squared plus 1, here I'd be left with a negative 18x, and I'd be left with one of the x squared plus 1s, because there's two of them. Yes? And then if I factor, again, that x squared plus 1, so i got to take something from here, I get a minus 4x times 9 minus 9x squared, and all over x squared plus 1 to the 4th. So... I could take this away and reduce one of those. See what I'm saying? So I still have an x squared plus 1. <laughs> to the, yeah, so so this would cancel and it would make this then to the third. Oh. Is that 
that's the operation that we're actually doing. Just trying to save a little bit of space. Yes? All right. So we did what we did. And now we get to see things kind of simplify a little bit. So that's gone. This is gone. This reduces to third. Let's distribute the negative 18x through. I get negative 18x to the third. Then what? Minus 18x. Then what? Minus 36x. Plus 36x to the third. All over. x squared plus 1 to the third power. Can I combine anything together? Yeah, the negative 18 and the positive 36 make 18x cubed minus 54x all over x squared plus 1 raised to the third power. Of the top factor. What can you take out? 18x that you're left with. x squared minus 3. Oh boy. That's kind of exciting, isn't it? I like that a lot. Very, very interesting. Number one, true or false, the bottom is always positive. Yeah, it is. Um, and the top is equal to zero actually at three locations. What could I plug in to get zero here? Zero. And what values could I plug in here to get zero? Plus or minus the root of three, right? So if the bottom is always equal to zero, if the bottom is always equal to zero, then I could just really focus on the top. And it looks like the top crosses at zero, at negative root of three, and at positive root of three. Notice the top function right now, it's a cubic. What type of shape am I going to get? Good, yeah. Is it going to be right side up or is it going to be upside down? Right side up, yeah. So although that's not the actual graph of the of the uh, second derivative, that does help me determine where the second derivative is positive and negative. So concave up where? Negative root of 3 to 0? Was there a question or are you going to give a response? Yes. Yes. So you are 100% correct. Except for the... The first derivative that we took, we graphed a parabola, but that wasn't the actual graph when you consider the denominator. It was just because the numerator was a parabola. See what I'm saying? This one right here, when we see it, when we look at the bottom one right here, we, we may see, oh, it somehow turned out to be a cubic. But when you consider the denominator, it's really not a cubic. The bottom, we don't. All we know is that it's positive. If the bottom was ever equal to zero, that's where we would that's where we would have to think about the bottom. Because the bottom is never negative and it's never zero, we could just ignore it altogether. Okay. All right. So we got concave up from negative root of three to zero, and then from root of three to infinity. So concave down, 
Negative infinity to negative root of 3. Union 0 to the root of 3. Inflection. Yeah, so I've got three points of inflection, don't I? I've got inflection at negative root of 3. I've got inflection at 0. I've got inflection at the root of 3. I'm going to go to my calculator to plug this in. Are you guys okay with that? So if I go to my calculator and I type in 9x divided by x squared plus 1, and then I go to my table, I'm going to type in the root of 3. Thank you. And 0. And then negative root of 3. And notice that if I plug in negative root of 3, I get negative 3.9. And if I plug in 0, I get 0. And if I plug in the root of 3, I get 3.9. Now, I don't think I have to tell you guys that this is beyond something that you would be asked to do for the test. However, I... <laughs> Both. Well, here's what the AP test would do to you in this situation. They would ask you to find the first derivative or possibly the second derivative and define a couple of these. See what I'm saying? They won't have you carry the process all the way through. Question. One more time. We're just looking for where it crosses the x-axis in most of these situations. Before I sketch that graph, I'm going to quick just try to put it here and see what I get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2. I'm going to plot these points, 1 and 4.5, negative 1 and negative 4.5, negative root of 3 and negative 3.9, root of 3 and positive 3.9, and 0, 0. Looks to me that the graph is going to look like local min, local max. I'm going for that. And I'm going to check to see what I got. Ah. Uh. Uh, not too bad. Huh? That's what we uncovered. We'll leave that for your assignment. I want you again, problems one, two, three. Please do problem four. Do not do problem five unless you want to. So only problem four? Yep. Okay. So I have a question for this. I thought concave up was going from positive to negative. And wouldn't this be...